In this video we will look at restoring colour to flat RAW files in Adobe Lightroom. If you are someone who shoots using the RAW file format, which is the best format to shoot with by the way, well then you may have noticed that by their nature RAW files tend to be void of any eye-catching colour and can look rather flat and dull. This is true and very much the case with all RAW files, but fear not because you can easily inject colour and life back into your RAW images using Adobe Lightroom. Ok, let's dive into it. So here I have an image that I captured at sunset down at the Dingle Peninsula which is located on the southwest of Ireland. It is a truly beautiful location with plenty to keep any photographer busy down there. As you can see the RAW file is definitely looking rather flat and dull right now. When I was shooting this I remember the grass and vegetation being much more vibrant as well as the glimpse of orange on the horizon from the setting sun being much more rich and more appealing. This RAW file is untouched at the moment with respect to its colour tones. What you are seeing is how the file looked when it came off my camera. The only adjustments that I have performed so far to this image is a lens profile correction, the removal of some chromatic aberration and also the removal of some sensor filter spots from the sky region. The colour tones that I want to bring out are definitely contained within the data of the raw image. I just need to make some tweaks in order to bring them out and make them shine. Alright, let's get to work. The first thing that we are going to do is to change the camera profile from Adobe Standard to Camera Landscape. This will introduce a colour saturation boost into the image as well as some contrast as evident by the stretching out of the histogram data. The image is looking rather blue at the moment and that is because the white balance and colour temperature is off and needs adjusting. We will head up to the basic panel and change the white balance to the daylight preset and you will notice that it added a small amount of warmth back into the image. For me the daylight preset has added in too much of a magenta colour cast or tint into the image so I'm going to set this value back to zero. And I'm also going to increase the warmth by adjusting the temp value to around 6 200. And now that I'm looking at the image again, I'm going to increase the magenta tint back up to a value of plus 5. Now let's head down to the vibrant slider and adjust the value to plus 10. This will introduce a little more saturation into the image, but it will only boost the colour tones where it is needed the most, as opposed to the saturation slider which would adjust all of the colour tones in the image. Ok, at this point we are going to go back down to the camera calibration panel and make some tweaks to the camera landscape preset. It is a good exercise to simply just play around with the sliders and seeing how the negative and positive adjustments will impact the image. Remember, there is no right or wrong value here. Simply explore the slider values and see which works best for your image. For now, and concerning this particular image, I think a value of plus 25 looks good for the red channel, and a value of plus 18 looks ok for the green channel. Actually, let's boost the red channel further to plus 40. Ok, so now let's head up to the colour panel and make some further saturation tweaks to the individual colour tones. I am going to pump up the reds to plus 20, the oranges to plus 10, the yellows to plus 5 and the greens to plus 20. I am also going to reduce the blues by minus 20. Actually, let's just pull that back to minus 10. So now I am looking at this foreground area with the vegetation and I want to bring out the colour tones some more here. To do this I will use a graduated filter. Turning on the show selected mask overlay feature will allow you to see what areas of the image will be impacted. I only want the areas of vegetation to be affected and not the ocean in the midground or the sky area. So let's just position this filter as best as we can. Alright, we can turn off the mask overlay for now and head over to the panel and tweak the graduated filter to suit our needs. First I am going to boost the saturation slightly. A value of 8 looks good. The temp value needs adjusting as well to add some more warmth into the vegetation. 
a value of around 5 looks good for now. I'm going to increase the exposure to let's say a value of 0.60. The changes introduced by the graduated filter are looking good but we want to ensure that it is not spilling over and impacting the areas outside of the foreground. So let's turn back on the mask overlay. We can use the erase brush in order to undo or mask out the changes introduced by the graduated filter. So now I'm just going to paint over the areas of the graduated filter highlighted in red, which I do not want to remain. A little bit on the ocean over here, some more in the Blasket Islands over here and there, and just a little bit more over here where the land meets the ocean. Okay, looking good, so let's click done. Let's go ahead and look at the before and after versions of this image by clicking on this little icon here. There is a big difference as you can see. The original on the left just looks so flat and void of color, whereas the adjustments on the image on the right side just lifts off the screen and pops out at you more. The vegetation is more vibrant, and the effects of the sunset on the horizon are much more apparent. Well, I hope you found this tutorial helpful, and thank you for taking the time to watch it. If you want to stay updated with my latest tutorial videos, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and if you want to stay updated with all of my latest image and blog posts, head on over to my Facebook page and click like. Thanks for watching.